Welcome back to This Week, our panel of political and media experts here to break down what happened this week. Steve Gill, syndicated radio host, heard locally on 1510 WLAC, and Jerry Maynard, Metro Councilman. Gentlemen, thank you for being here. Thank you. Happy Father's Day weekend. Dream vacation, Steve. I like Tahiti, but I'm going to go with Jackson Hole, Wyoming, because during the winter you can ski, during the summer you can hike, bike, fish. I like Jackson Hole. How about you, Jerry? I love Nashville. Gaylord Opryland Hotel. Re-election. Any weekend Re-election. time, I, it is I like to be at Gaylord and going down the river, Look enjoying all the fascinating uh, amenities there here in Nashville. You know what? We'll we'll let it. Go. We'll, Butch would be very happy about that. Let's talk about the fairground situation. August fourth is the is the uh, the referendum there for and a lot of save our fairgrounds. Uh, a lot of play on that. Uh, the question is if that does work. Uh, What's next, Jerry? Well, you know, the council passed the legislation to say come up with a master plan. Let's work together, administration, the council, and those persons who are stakeholders and say let's come up with a master plan on how we redevelop or leave it the same way. If you pass this legislation, we lose the flexibility of coming up with a master plan. If this legislation, if this referendum rather passes, we lose all flexibility. So then the mayor then does not have the flexibility to come up with a master plan. The council then does not have a say. We will have to run the fairgrounds as it is today, and we cannot change the status. So that's why I'm not supporting it. I think the city should have the flexibility. And if the voters don't like what we come up with, they can always go back to the voters' box and ballot and say, we don't like your decision on the fairgrounds. Give us the flexibility to come up with a master plan. And, and is this a referendum on Mayor Dean? I don't think it's a referendum on him. He's going to have his own election. He's going to be pushing his own deal. I don't think it's a one-issue election. I think the challenge is I don't like um, decisions made by committees. And what you have in this case is really a committee of about 500,000 residents of Nashville making a decision. Committees don't work. You've got to have some experts get together and decide, okay, what's the right thing to do with the fairgrounds? Let's do that. And if what we're doing isn't the right thing, let's come up with something better. If what we're doing is the right thing, let's do it better. But the idea that 500,000 people saying, you know, do something without real concrete instruction really is trying to legislate by committee, and it's going to be a disaster. We're going to keep an eye on that. Governor Haslam signed a bill that's putting a cap on, on what juries can award, $750,000, generally speaking. Uh, former Senator, um, uh, former Senator Fred, Thompson. Fred Thompson was saying that... He looks that different he, with the goatee. He, he does. He has <laughs> changed. Uh, is, is on record as saying that, that it's not the government's place to do this. You guys are lawyers. What do you think? Well, I think this is what needs to happen. We need to talk to small business owners and say, you all create jobs. I have not had one small business owner say to me, boy, if I only had tort reform, my business could really succeed. They say we need capital. We need uh, people with skills. We need people with education. We need to have an economy that was that is recovering so that people will have dollars to spend with my business. I've not had one small business owner say, boy, if I had some tort reform, business would be better for us. Yeah, is this a good move by, by the governor? Well, first of all, Fred Thompson supported this when he was in in the U.S. Senate when he was in the political arena. When he got hired to oppose it, he came out in opposition to the tort. Funny how that works. Got to keep that in in play. Also, I would point out to Jerry that Texas took the lead on this kind of tort reform, and Texas has led the nation in the last several years, creating a net of 200,000 plus jobs after they passed tort reform. So I think you will see an increase. Certainly you're seeing companies flee places like Illinois, Michigan, New York, California, where the tort reform is, is, is needed, where the tax regulation is out of control. The bottom line is people are fleeing those states and coming to places like Tennessee, and they've already shown their willingness to go to places like Texas. Well, let me say this about Texas. It had nothing to do with tort tort reform. Look at the census. You had population shift from the north down to the south, including Tennessee, Florida, Georgia, and Texas. Texas had one of the largest growths in population. That's why you see the increase in jobs, increase in job creation, because business owners are moving down there, entrepreneurs are moving down there, skilled labor is moving down there. And I will agree with Steve is that your tax rates are different in Texas than they are in Illinois, and all, because in Illinois, when I lived in Chicago, you had the local tax, you had the state tax, you had federal tax. Down in Texas, you don't have that tax system. So I don't think it's because of tort reform, it's because of population shift from up north down south. But one of the reasons those businesses are moving to Texas is because of that different tax change, and the tort reform is a piece of that. Illinois, Jerry's exactly right, Illinois just responded to their budget disaster by raising taxes 60% on, t- on corporations, 60% on individuals, and not surprisingly, Governor Haslam and Bill Haggerty, the Economic Com- Community Development Commissioner, are up there trying to recruit those businesses to Tennessee, this tort reform issue will help them. Tort reform does not create jobs. I want to move on to what has dominated, right or wrong, Anthony Weiner resigns. It's been three weeks in the coming. Let me approach it this way. If he had just said from the very beginning, yes, that's me, that's, that's, 
that's me in the picture and kept and didn't lie at the beginning. Do you think he could still be congressman? I, I think that he still would have been done. I think the lie compounded it. But as you've had more stories come out, including flirtations with 17-year-old girls, the, the nature, the graphic nature of these, uh, these tweets and, and, and the, just the name, the last name. If this guy's last name was Smith instead of Wiener and he wasn't a national joke, I think it would be a different story. If he had resigned in the first 24 hours, he'd already be on the way to political recovery. As it is, I don't think he can ever recover. Sure. Let me answer the question about Anthony Wiener. Mm -hmm. The Republicans both in the House and in the Senate and here locally have not offered any job bills. Any bills that create jobs, create jobs at all. We need to be talking about jobs, not Anthony Weiner. Yeah, I but believe he, right but now. He could have, he could have yeah. if he would have resigned immediately, then right. he would have been out of the conversation. We, we, they can get back to the We business. need to talk about Social Security. We need to talk about the Republicans that are trying to do what the, the way with South Social Security as it is now and Medicare. That's the important things to us, citizens of uh, Davidson County, Tennessee, and, and the citizens of the United States. Let's talk about those issues and not Anthony. Anthony needs to worry about his wife and keeping his family. And so and we you can make an argument about, that he should have been done. Talking about been, the Social Security. Yeah. But, but, but how, can, Medicare. how can we trust guys to make good decisions on creating jobs for this country, on handling four wars that we're now in when you add Libya and Yemen? How can you expect guys like this to handle that when they're spending all their time tweeting 17-year-old girls, trying to flirt with them and sending okay. out pictures of their package? I, the I other understand. thing is... President Obama has cost us millions of jobs in this country. If you want to talk about jobs, let's talk about the fact that he's trying to blame any time teller machines for high unemployment. And America knows that's not the truth. All right, let's take this conversation so, since it's national. Let's talk about the, the, uh, the, the debate that happened the other night with, with the Republicans. Is there anybody out there, if, this, if the economy continues to tank, is, is, is Mitt Romney or going to be kind of the, the, uh, the, the candidate by default? I mean, where, where do you see this? I think Mitt Romney is going to win, and here's why. Because when you run a national election. You have to have organization and money. Mitt Romney has money, and I believe he has organization. The problem with the Kane, the problem with people like Michelle Bachman, they do not have national organizations. When you have a caucus, it's different from a primary. With a primary, you can run television ads, millions of dollars, but in a caucus, you have to have organization. I'm not sure that Kane, I'm not sure that Palenti, I'm not sure that Bachman really have, in 40 states or, or 30 states, really have the organizational structure in place to know how to run a campaign, especially in caucuses. That's how Obama beat uh, Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton cheated every state like it the, was a the primary. The infrastructure, no question, Correct. for what President Obama did back then. He right. actually got ahead of the curve. Can people like, like Kane and, and Bachman build an infrastructure to, to be a candidate? It's difficult because it is very expensive. And if you win, say, the Iowa caucuses, or if you do well in New Hampshire, then come down and win in South Carolina, the pace at which the next primaries take place is so fast, you don't have the time to create an organization after you get that big momentum by getting those early wins. So what they're doing now is going to dictate whether they're a player in those early states and then can kind of move into the secondary ones. Romney clearly has a front-runner status at this point, and with the money, the organization, I think being right on most of the issues, he's going to be in good shape. The best news for him, in terms of the Republican primary, was the newest polling that shows he can beat Barack Obama head-to-head. -head. That's a long way till Election Day, but that helps him immeasurably in this primary. The other thing is, when you don't, if you don't like Romney, if you think he's too liberal, he's not Tea Party enough, who is your candidate? Is it Bachman or Centone? Uh, Centone? We don't know which one yet. All right, good stuff, guys. Have a great weekend. Again, happy Father's Day. You guys are, you. Uh, are good role models. I said that on TV. All right, we'll be right back on this week.